liquid snoot. And in the top left, the Terran Challenger. T-E-S Soul. I forget what T-E-S is. I'll remember in the middle of this and I'll feel bad. But it's a ZVT on Abyssal Reef. On Abyssal Reef. Where this map works a little bit differently. Uh, it's still a two-player map. It's relatively standard. You got your second base that's a little bit more vulnerable, but still kind of protected. The third base is quite exposed. And uh, it's a little bit harder to hold. And also you have the option of a third base as well on the low ground, especially for Terran players. Uh, and the way you move around the map, there are a lot of choke points. There's a lot of high ground to think about. Things like that. So it can end up being one of those maps where armies kind of run around each other until they finally engage on the open fields around uh, the outside of bases. We'll have to see how Snoot decides to engage. On the other side, as a Terran, uh, honestly, as a Terran player, you can feel pretty comfortable. You can get three bases, and unless you make big mistakes or you commit, overcommit early on, uh, then usually you can get your three bases up pretty safely. What you do from there, though, uh, is kind of the big question. Because if Zerg players get four bases, then they can kind of take the map, and they'll take you with it. Alright, we have the Reaper expand. We'll have to see if he opts for effect, or here he's just kind of chilling. A second barracks, okay. Before he finishes up uh, his second depot. So it's going to be a 2-1-1. One. More than likely. Every once in a while, you'll still get people who add on the barracks 3, the barracks 4... Uh, and go for that. But it, it's pretty uncommon nowadays. Pretty easy to scout out as well. On the other side, Snoot has gone for the Zergling Speed and then pulled all of his drones out of gas. So that way he can maximize his mineral income and work his way towards a lot of queens. Uh, Zergling's on a third base, as is pretty customary. Now, if there's any player who's really known for queen usage... Uh, since, um, what was his name? Oh, I can't remember anymore. Ah, shit, what was his name? Spanisha, Spanishawa. Spanishawa. Spanishwa? Spanishawa. Anyways, uh, one of the first guys to go for one of those mass queen builds. Queens have gotten even better. Uh, and they've gotten even more popular since that time, especially with the Legacy of the Void and Creep spread so quick, and the queens have so much anti-air range. Against impact on the way. The way this works is around, and Snoot just got a beat on it. He can look at his vision. He sees the two racks. He sees the factory time. And right around the five-minute mark, those two medevacs and marines come across the map and try to put pressure on. Now, the manner, 2-1-1 two, 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 one, one is not just one straight-up build. The manner in which you use those first two medevacs is very important. Whether you pressure the third base, you try to go for a big drop in, like, the natural or the main, or you just sit at the edge of creep. Each player kind of has their own style of how they like to play it. Uh, it's partly based on what the Zerg player is doing. It's partly based on what you're comfortable doing. Most players will usually drop outside the third, see if they can poke in, and then kind of pull back to deal with the creep. Also, what's important to talk about is the follow-up to the 2-1-1. Do we have engineering bays for upgrades? Does he go for a quick third command center? Is he adding on any additional barracks? How much gas does he have at the second base? These are all important questions. Does he go for follow-up medevacs, or does he go for upgrades? These are the big decisions. Whereas Snoot on the other side has to decide, is he going to go for multiple upgrades? Is he going to try to get a quick lair? Is he going to be entirely relying on queens to defend? Is there going to be any sort of counterattack? He knows what he's dealing with. He's elected to play defensive. He's up to 48 drones. I don't know if I've ever seen a player get quite that many drones against this build. That's actually very impressive and very greedy. Uh, in classic Snoop manner. But he somehow managed to get 48 drones. 50 dr Okay, okay. I feel like... I feel like he should get punished a little bit for that. I feel like he shouldn't be able to hold on with 50 drones. But I bet he will, because he's Snoop, and he can do that. But on the other side, Soul's opting for that third command center into the double NG bay. He should be adding on the gases here at the second base momentarily as well. 
And he's got the double drop coming out at the very edge. Pretty conservative with it, moving in towards the third base. Now we see the gases. We see the plus one. I accidentally hit the pause button. <laughs> but there are seven queens waiting to greet him. One will get gunned down immediately by now the Zerglings come up. Pretty big mistake there, losing a single medevac right off the bat. That's half your medevacs. That sounds a lot... That sounds a lot crazier. He lost a medevac. He lost half of his entire medevac force. There you go. That's how you hype it up. Of course, he can deny the creep. There's not enough Zerglings on the deck to really go for a surround here or anything like that. And there is a third command center. So when you go for the third CC, you kind of give up the ability to seriously pressure a Zerg player. Uh, you can poke back. You can hold him at bay. But you can't really dart in uh, is how it works. Yeah, the, the Marines st sitting at the edge of the creep. Moving on down, looking to see if there's any more creep they can kill, or maybe a fourth base if he was getting real ambitious. But no, Snoop playing conservative. He's actually going for the plus one, plus one, but that's ranged attack, and he's got a roach one. So it looks like Snoot's going to opt for that roach-heavy style. Uh, he's still making a lot of links. He's still got a lot of creep. But roaches and maybe ravagers... Could be the choice. It's not very common, uh, but especially if you can combo it with maybe some fungal growth, then of course Ravagers can be possibly the most cost-effective units, especially in the early mid game. The upgrades are finishing at similar timings. The armory is on the way in a timely manner. Soul has locked down his third base. Some drones are being gunned down. Some Zerglings as well. Looks like five workers have been killed. The medevac does escape with red HP. Snoot has taken another. And the worker counts 63 to 59. He hasn't really found a window to make too many more drones uh, because he was so greedy with that first wave. Melee attack on the way as well. So it looks like Snoot really going for this man fight style. He's got roaches. He's going to have zerglings with upgrades. So he's just going for the mass units, which isn't really as common lately. Either you kind of go roach ravager directly into infester or you go kind of like zergling uh, Baneling into either Hive or Mutalisks. Going Roach Ravager Ling is really something you don't see. So it could take Soul a little bit off guard. If suddenly he's fighting against this double-pronged army of ranged attack from Ravagers and the damage and the potential surround of Zergnings. We'll have to see. But Snoot has found himself at 150, so, uh, 155 supply at 8 minutes. He's got an infestation pit on the way. It just finished up. Plus two carapace, plus one melee attack, and most importantly, a hive is more. So, kind of playing this map to his advantage. He's getting the 2 2, he's getting the plus one mech weapons. He's getting a fourth base, but I'm not sure. Okay, it looks like he realizes a little bit of what he's up against. He's getting the mech weapons, he's getting tanks. He sees the Roach Ravager, and he realizes the threat this poses. Widow Mines don't cut it. Widow Mines are just as likely to hurt you as much as they are to hurt them uh, in this type of situation. So the drops are coming in. He's got a double drop towards the main. His drop was pushed back at the front. The fourth base is under fire. That's going to force the drones away. The double drop will be repelled in the main base. Snoot Slings scramble back to deal with that. And the drop evacuating from the fourth. It did get the drones out of there. Looks like he killed just one more. Snoot quick on the draw as always. A double drop darting back in towards the main base, but the Zerglings are very prepared for this eventuality. Another do drop darting towards the left side. A single, oh, a few queens here. He could lose these medevacs, but it looks like Snoop not quite paying attention. Okay, he target fires him down. There aren't really any units here to deal with this. So Snoop will lose creeps red and will lose queens and lose a little bit of ground. And remember, his hive was slightly delayed because of the upgrades and because of the lair tech he was going for, the really heavy lair tech. So though he has a hive done, no ultralisk cavern, as I say it. No spire, no greater spire, no pathogen glands, no burrow. But he is maxed out. Soul, on the other hand, has a strong push, ready to push forward. There is very there is no anti-air here, effectively, besides queens. So Soul is pretty much free to drop as long as you have a range of queens and spores. And this army has not been scouted. It's moving around the right side. Plus one mech weapons is gonna be finished. Plus two, plus two has finished on the bio. The Zerglings are slipping in. This is not how you build a wall. This was more designed to keep roaches and ravagers out 
than it was to keep Zerglings out. And the Zerglings are here now, so this is the real danger. But Fuggles on the other side. He's going to be able to lock some of this down, but Soul, with a beautiful positioning on the tanks, will knock him up against the minerals and knock down a lot of those Ravagers. But the Zerglings are doing a great job in counterattacking. We do see... Ooh. Another medevac getting taken out, but the drop in the back will force some of these units back. The planetary at the fourth base, gonna be enough. The third base gonna redrop down. The tanks will be reestablished. And now Souls at 155 to 155 supply to 186. But those ultralists are in the mail right now, and they have not been delivered yet. A Fungal comes out, lands on top. The Infester goes down, but the Corrosive Biles will do what they need to do and hold this army back. There are no more real drops. The fourth base is under heavy fire. He will fall back. The third hatchery does fall. The tanks are going to be taken out. He's stutter stepping back. There's one fungal in just a couple seconds. He won't be able to land it on these medevacs. They will evacuate. They will escape. But he did take out the third base. He took out a few more drones, up to 24 now, but Snoop very quick to replace them. Another double drop coming in. Darn in the back. This is the big weakness. He has no real anti-air. He has the queens. But these medevacs can keep coming in where he needs them not to be. Queen with the transfuses. Queens with the transfuses. Actually, he has only four queens, but they're all here. So we will be able to keep that fourth base alive. Well, I guess third base now, very importantly. We've got some ghosts on the way, though. Ghosts, of course. The direct counter to the Ultralist. It only takes four snipes to be able to rip through that Ultralisk armor and be able to take it out. The drop will be mostly cleaned up. No Spire yet. That's how you can tell Snoot's under heavy pressure. If you wanted to, if you were comfortable in your position, you were looking to close out the game, you get a Spire, you get Corruptors, you go up to Broodlords, you make sure you win the game. But Snoot right now, he, he's been under a lot of pressure. Soul's been doing a good job of sticking it to him. So he can't get the Spire. He can't get the Corruptors. He can't take out these drops and he can't end the game unless he gets some nice fungals but soul's not letting that happen that is a lot of tanks right now eight tanks they have just the plus one mech weapons but just the tanks themselves are quite good looks like this medevac not long for this world but he gave it a good shot yeah okay all right you're dead it's it's over okay maybe not i spoke too soon all right Five more ghosts on the way. A very spooky composition coming out. But now the game has slowed down as it must. Because what's happened? We've reached the later game. Snoot has... Both players have their power units. We've got tanks for soul and ghosts as well. Well, on the other side, Snoot, he has infestors. He has ultralists fully upgraded. So that means neither player can really commit to small attacks because that means they might lose the bigger fight. Yeah, soul will send out a drop. I'm sure Snoot at some point might send out like a Zergling counterattack, but overall, neither can afford to commit more than a drop or a, a slight run by. Otherwise, that means they'll lose the larger fight. Alright, targeted down. Yeah, some Zerglings run by at the same time. He actually burrows them. I'm not sure if Sol noticed that. Those could be annoying later on. He does not have Adrenal Glands. So a bit of an oversight there. Thank you, Kiasis. Oh! I'm out of that getting knocked out of this world. But yeah, we've reached. Both players have taken some blows. Soul's been dealing out a lot of damage, but Snoot's had some big counterattacks as well. Yeah, the Zergling's coming in, working on the SCVs. He still has a healthy number, but that could change quickly. There, finally, is the Spire. The Spire is how to end the game. Of course, it, Ultras can do it, Infestors can do it, but they're not reliable. We do have on the other side. Now Snoot sieging up this base. The Infestors getting a little bit too close for comfort. A snipe comes out, the Fungal will land. But at the cost of the Fester. Ultras not so great in the ranged attack department. He will be forced away. The snipes come out. One shot the Ravagers, remember. They one shot Roaches. They one shot Infestors. They one shot Ravagers. And obviously they one shot Zerglings. Not that you would ever snipe against Zerglings. 
But the Spire is the end game for Snoot. Whereas right now, honestly, Soul has what he needs. Does he have plus three, plus three? He does. And plus two mech weapons, and he has 14 ghosts. So we're almost at the ideal. He doesn't have Cloak. If he had Cloak, then this would pretty much be the ideal unit composition to deal with the ground army. He has enough ghosts. He has a lot of tanks. And he's off a creep right now. Like, if these ultras overcommit, five or six can get sniped out per volley. Even adding on a, a forward sensor tower, as well as a missile turret to zone out. There seems to be a counterattack. I'm not sure if there was a medevac or not. But how do you engage down here? There might be a couple fungals. Ooh, the infestors on the left side could be spicy. The tanks need to siege up in a good position. He can get almost a tank surround on this side. Do we have any EMPs? The tank's obliterating a good fungal on the front, though. The snipe's coming out, knocking the ultras down before they can engage. And it looks like Soul's moving up. Snoot's going to be forced to retreat from two of his bases. He's got two more in the center, but he's feeling the hurt right now. Snoot going for the direct counterattack. He's got the Greater Spire on the way. Does he have any Corruptors in production or in the air? He has no Corruptors in production or in the air. So he does have a Greater Spire. He does have that late-game tech, but he doesn't have the ability to actually use it yet. And Soul is continuing to push into the heart of the swarm. He's tearing through the creep right now. The Ultralists still want to engage. I don't think there are any Infestors under here. The tanks can get a ridiculous concave. Snoot's desperately trying to put something together. He's still got 181 supply, 141 army supply, and I think he's going to be going for it. It looks like just enough energy for one fungal. And will he use it? Big fungal right in the middle chunk here. Ultra's coming from the top. There are no snipes to engage. A lot of these units are badly hurt. The Corrosive Bile's on the top. The Ultra's swing down. Bring the hammer down from the north. The Metavex will be forced to pick up the ghosts and get out of there. Snoot will hold. But there's a counterattack on the left side. Just the Queens are here to defend, but the Queen should be enough in order to buy time for these units to come back. And it seems like that middle base did survive with HP to spare. And the Metavax darting back in. This might be a little bit greedy. Are there any Infestors, though? He can always pick up and get out. Until the Infestors are out, until the Corruptors are here, he can pick up and he can get out. All right, five more ghosts on the way. He's got that late game. That's what he needs, a triple drop on the left side. Oh, that's not where you need to be. One fungal on these medevacs full of ghosts could turn the tides completely in Snoot's favor. Yeah, both of them struggling here. The economies are still relatively high. But neither can really afford to switch. I mean, Soul, he's building the right units. He just needs to put them in the right place, put them together at the right time. He sees the infester. He's going for it. The fungal whiffs. He airballed it on that one. He sees there are no more fungals. We got the drop on this side. Maybe a little bit ambitious, as plenty of Zerglings are there. And he gets the, the gets the catch with the fungal. On the other side, uh-oh. This could be real. Nails the fungal down. Triple drop. Knocked out of the sky, including one Ravager here for, for extra flavor. And that's what he needed. That's 30. Oh, not 30. Like 25 supply right there. Plus the other Medivac, almost 30 supply down in a single sweep. Now he has room for Corruptors. Now he has room to go towards Broodlords. Now he has room to attack. That's what Snoot needed. He just needed to take that pressure off for a few seconds so he has some room to breathe. There's another drop coming towards this side. But is he ready for the attack on this one? Soul. He has 115 army supply. The tanks are sieging up, but he is on the creep. Gives it a scan, takes out the creep, but it will take a little while to recede. This base going to go down. The Ultralist, the Infestors, and a handful of Corruptors now. The hatchery is under fire. The tank line is good. The ghosts are at the back, ready to fire their snipes off. The Broodlords are being produced. Snoot cutting his losses, realizing this battle is not one he wants to take. There's a drop on the right. The Queens always at the ready. We'll repel it. But Snoot has dropped a couple more bases. But he has not dropped in supply. He's still at 200. This base must be reestablished. It looks like the Zergling doing its best work here. 
to just jam itself under that command center. Still a good economy for both players. In, in favor of Soul, to be honest. But the cost efficiency, Snoot's building that death ball that he loves. One fungal. One fungal in this game can add. I mean, a, a series of snipes as well. He gets some good snipes off or lands a couple EMPs and then the ghosts just rip through everything. It's still 14 ghosts against 8 infestors. 7 ultralists, 4 broodlords, and a handful of other things. But, oh, he needs a sand. He needs it now. Big fungal in the middle. The EMP comes out. The fungal will be on point, but not enough to break through this army. It's 191 to 171 supply. The ultralists are counterattacking on the other side. He's just throwing them away. He wants better units. He doesn't really have the money to make more Broodlords. But he should be able to get through this. The tanks are sieged up. He's repairing the Planetary Fortress. At the same time, Soul's moving forward. He scans. He sees the Infestors. But all those tanks are sieged up in the same place. Unfortunately for him, the Broodlords see that as well. He needs some snipes off. The Broods will take some hits. One will connect. A couple Vikings. There's only a single Corruptor. Sick. More Broods at the front. Some Zeroes are going to go down. I can't even say any words. But he's landing the EMP. Soul losing a lot of supply very quickly. The Ultralists are still ripping through the front. The Kaiser Blades are a match for anything that comes up against them. This army is still trying to move forward. The anti-air is starting to be very lacking. Snoot somehow is still in 138 supply. Almost all the energy. There's going to be one fungal on these infestors. It appears most of the Ultras have made their way back. He, he ripped the heart out of Soul in one attack. There's nothing left at home. Suddenly this attack is all there is. 71 to 111 supply. He's going to try to pick up. He's going to try to get out. And he will be successful. But he's lost so much. Somehow this, this ultra will survive. It's a uh, tussle with the planetary fortress there. Oh my god. Will this one? What is the ghost count? Zero. With zero ghosts, you do not kill these ultras. I don't care if they're hurt. They are not dead. Even with a couple tanks. With zero ghosts, you do not kill these ultras. That's the real. There are no fungals at the back. I don't think he can really afford mules. The queens are coming up. Those medics in the back. Medivacs are good, but queens are better. A couple tanks are going to go down in Seoul. He just had his economy torn out from under him. Somehow the ultralist counterattack, words that are rarely said, the ultralist counterattack did more than enough. And now it's 56 to 117. The queen count is 13. It's 13 queens, 5 ultras, 3 infestors, 3 zerglings, and 6, six roaches. That's the army. And I think we're about to see the end. The fungals come up enough to kill these. That's GG. I mean, what, what does Soul have? Is he going to try? I mean, you've gone 23 minutes, 24 minutes. You had, you were on the brink of victory. But Snood held on. He has an iron grip. He knows when to cut his losses and when to take a fight. And where to take a fight. And we saw that in this game again. The Queens will surround the Metavax and take them out. And that... Okay, that was a pretty sick game. That was, that was pretty good.